Jethro Tull's Thick as a Brick turns 50 this year. We just had a conversation with Ian Anderson about looking back at that classic album. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. The Zealot Gene is the brand new album from Jethro Tull and Ian Anderson. They haven't released a, a new album since 2003. That was their Christmas album. So it's been a long time coming for Jethro Tull fans. And a lot of things have changed in the band, of course, personnel and other things. So far, the reviews have been favorable. And the band locked into the top 10 of the British charts for the first time in a whole bunch of years. Keep in mind, if you want to see this entire interview, and not just snippets, the whole thing's on our sister channel, Rock History Book. There'll be links there, as well as links to the podcast of this conversation. Here's Ian Anderson. Thick as a Brick turns 50 this year. Uh, is What's the box set going to look like? Well, Thick as a Brick was uh, amply dispatched at the age of 40 in terms of box sets and so on, with Thick as a Brick... Uh, being remixed by Stephen Wilson and the subsequent uh, Thick as a Brick 2 in 2012. They were bundled together as a big box set. More than that, I can't do because Thick as a Brick was written as a project with that music only. There are no outtakes. There are no additional uh, songs or parts. It, it is what it is. It's, it is... Um, and, and back then, of course, there were no live performances that were recorded. So I'm afraid... The uh, if thick as a brick 50th anniversary, you've just got to go back and with a big sharpie and put a five where the four used to be. <laughs> There's a lot of genres going on. I remember someone coming to my house when I was a kid, and someone said, This is the most complex music I've ever heard. There's like every genre in the world being played on this album. What was your approach to that to putting that together? Well, I wasn't really thinking about about anything other than the last three minutes of music that I that I'd written because I would in when we were working on the album I, I would write you know three minutes of music in the morning and then go to meet the other guys in the band in the afternoon and we would rehearse the the new stuff and add it on to what we did the day before and we gradually built up an album but it was a very organic growth uh, you know we would recap on what we'd done as we went along so there was some direction that I could apply perhaps the following morning when I went to write the next few minutes. But it wasn't really in my head to try and give it any particular shape or otherwise. The, the underlying notion was music that was, or rather lyrics that were written um, by an eight-year-old precocious schoolboy learning to cope with being a child in an adult world and coping with some of the stereotypes and prejudices that, that you face and, and are a little confusing, perhaps uh, as a child and maybe even for a lot of people when they get much older. But uh, that was the underlying essence, the concept of the album, and it was done in a tongue-in-cheek, spoof kind of a way. It was um, a parody of concept albums of the era dressed up in a, a packaging that was a 16-page newspaper, which was a parody of a, a provincial um, small-town newspaper in the UK. Um, I, 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 I was hopeful that people would accept it, they, they would get it, you know, and, and I think that the answer is that 50% of the people understood exactly what I was getting at and, and the, the comedic aspect of it. The other 50% didn't get it, but that, that was pretty good because I rather liked the idea that you could be on stage and half the people are scratching their heads thinking, what? And the other half are going, yeah, I love that. It's, uh, it's, it's somehow more gratifying than, than having everybody feel the same way about it. So I think a, d a degree of puzzlement and curiosity is um, part of what um, makes it ultimately more enjoyable if you uh, if you have to think twice or three times or four times about it to to grasp finally what it might mean for you which is probably still different to what it means to me in terms of the uh, the lyrical references that it's, you can never know what's really in the in the the writer's mind with uh, with pop lyrics or rock lyrics you know it's a degree of abstracts in there that um, I think is what makes it attractive Where'd you come up with the, the name? Was Gerald Bostock based on anybody? Or where'd you come up with that? Uh, he was based perhaps a little bit on me, but also a bit on other children that I went to school with who were the those that were the the more serious and studious children who were never very popular. They, they were tended to be bullied. They weren't good at sports. They were, um, you know, so there's, there's an element really of, um, it's not a single person, it's just, to some extent, speaking from my own personal memory of being a 
child and and other people that I saw around me and um and I, I tend you know being an observational writer I tend usually to adopt more from other people I don't usually use my own emotions or my my own experiences directly in writing a song my experiences of of seeing a particular topic I, I, I of course I, I'm, I'm working within the terms of that but I'm not usually talking about my own emotions or my own historical life events that that's um rare that I ever do that I'm, I'm mostly an observer of other people people in a landscape rather like a painter rather like a mm-hmm. rather like a a mané I'm, I'm not really a I, I I'm not a landscape painter and I'm not a portrait painter I I like to see people in a context and see what they're doing where they are and that that's that, that's my visual reference really so songs are very often about um they're never really close ups of people are you a, uh, having said that are you a people watcher when you go someplace do you study people or is this been a, like when i was a kid i did that and i still do that i'm just curious yeah and that's why one of the reasons i like to travel alone and use public transport where i can because i'm i find it more enjoyable to be uh, 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 alone and able to use my eyes and look out of a window. So I'm you're more likely to be sitting on a train. Certainly you won't find me in a tour bus traveling at night. That's, uh, that would be hell. And I, I'm not very keen on being an air, in an airplane either because I'm not a happy flyer. But, you know, on the ground, I prefer really to be in the train. I managed to do that to some extent when I'm, well, always when I'm in the UK, but Sometimes in Europe, I'm, I'm traveling between towns or even between countries using the public train services. But don't, don't, don't a lot of people, they know your face, though. Don't people bug you? No, no, they don't, because they might stop and think, oh, that guy sitting over there. And, that, you know, he, he reminds me of, that, of somebody, I can't think who it is, but they, they don't expect to see you in that context. If you're on a bus, you know, or on a train, people are not going to be you know, necessarily looking at you, that you're just another faceless person in the crowd. On the other hand, if you arrive at an international airport, then it's hard to escape. If people know that you're coming to do a tour, there's going to be some fans there. And that's, um, you know, you, they, they spot you immediately, even if you're wearing a face mask and with a hat over your head, they still they still recognize you some some way. I, I From my experience in the last few months, that is still the case. Have fans ever done They expect to see you there. They expect to see you, so they do. If you want to see the entire interview with Ian, it'll be on our sister channel, Rock History Book, and there'll be a link also to the podcast in the description of this video. Make sure you comment on our videos and subscribe to our channel and share our videos. We love it when you do that. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take care of yourself.